have a whole uh, list of questions from pregnant women uh, from a type 1 pregnant pregnancy group um, so we can do one video just going through these questions okay now remember what I told you before mm -hmm. that um, I I don't know that much about the pathology of the pregnancies because I've never seen it because the the uh, relatively <clears throat> few women I've treated have done so well uh, <laughs> so it's uh, uh, you have to uh, go easy on the questions. Well, set you know, set the stage. What you know, the the questions are all centered around the 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 idea that the women, just like the the parents with the kids, the women are sort of being bullied into eating lots of carbohydrate. Um, they're running high blood sugars, and what's going to happen uh, when the, when they do that? Okay. There is no doubt, if you look at the scientific literature, that high blood sugars beget serious problems when it comes to pregnancy. Not only, uh, and I'm talking about pregnant, pregnancy in either prior diabetics, people who are diabetic before they became pregnant, uh, they're usually type 1s, uh, or people who'd become diabetic during the pregnancies. The high blood sugars are uh, lead to a high incidence of fetal abnormalities, some of which are very serious. Um, also, to complications of the pregnancy, like uh, the fetus gets too big too fast and they have to deliver early by cesarean, uh, or the mother gets uh, a condition called preeclampsia or eclampsia where blood pressure goes dangerously high, could be life-threatening uh, and uh, uh, that complicates the pregnancy for the mother. Um, uh, uh, the big concern, however, is the fetal abnormalities and that can happen uh, early on uh, in the first trimester, first three months of pregnancy. Uh, you can, uh, when uh, or organogenesis occurs, when you're developing uh, the formation of organs, they can come out inaccurate. And uh, you see all kinds of deformities, whether internal, uh, external, biochemical, uh, or whatever. There also is the matter of what's going to happen to the mother down the road. Uh, let's say that uh, she uh, is obese during pregnancy and was never diabetic. X years down the road, she may become a type 2 diabetic if she gets obese during pregnancy, which is, happens when you get a lot of carbohydrate. Um, of the uh, pregnant people whom I've treated, all of them have lost weight. Most of them started off overweight, and um, they all had normal deliveries, normal pregnancies, and normal infants. It was not a large number, though. I therefore have no experience directly with the adverse effects of diabetic pregnancies because mine have been successful. But I had one patient relatively recently who uh, got pregnant even though I told her not to because she was overeating. She was not obese, but she was a little overweight. She was eating too much carbohydrate, her blood sugars were elevated, I warned her about danger to the fetus. She ended up picking a high-risk um, obstetrician who believed in a high-carbohydrate diet. Uh, and he cited the ADA guideline of 137 
uh, grams of carbohydrate a day. And I told her that I couldn't possibly keep her blood sugars normal during this pregnancy at 137 grams of carbo a day. I don't know how. I couldn't do it for myself. I can't do it for anybody. Um, and uh, I said, either you have to find uh, a more up-to-date uh, obstetrician or uh, you'll have to find uh, another endocrinologist to treat your diabetes. So she found an endocrinologist who followed the ADA guidelines and uh, she ended up with both a cesarean and with uh, a child with cystic fibrosis. So she had to give up her job, which was a very good job, and spend her life taking care of a very sick child with cystic fibrosis. And that's my only experience. Uh, and it was not direct because I was no longer treating her. She called me uh, after the child was born to let me know that I was right. Uh, that otherwise I would not have found out. Uh, so these high carbohydrate pregnancies are very sad things. And uh, if you want to read more about this, you could search the literature for the works of Lois Jovanovich, J-O-V-A-N-O-V-I-C, who was a pioneer in achieving normal blood sugar pregnancies, usually starting with type 1 diabetic women. And how did she achieve them? She used low carbohydrate diets and uh, the guidelines of my book. So some, something like the solution. Something six, six grams for breakfast, 12 for lunch, 12 for dinner. That's a reasonable guideline. Right, and th those are maximum amounts. Mm -hmm. They're not, uh, it's not that they're minimum or uh, precise, they're maximums. I have a question here, this woman says that the doctor says that ketones will cause, if she has ketones in her blood from a low carb diet, would cause the baby to have birth defects and uh, that's, cause a that's miscarriage. A, that's a lie. Uh, first of all, many non-diabetics, I don't know if it's most, but many, wake up every morning with a little bit of ketones in the urine. Pregnant women, once the pregnancy is well underway and they have a fetus on board uh, that's demanding nutrients, uh, always have uh, ketones in their urine, at least when they get up in the morning. Um, in fact, what happens in pregnancy is you spend the first trimester building fat, which uh, the mother and infant are going, or mother and fetus are going to be use, using uh, in the third trimester. So uh, toward the latter part of pregnancy, you're living off of fat. You have to make ketones. So uh, he's not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, this is routine for all pregnancies to have ketones. Uh, ketones, uh, and by the way, uh, ketones uh, are valuable substrates for uh, the brain, uh, maintaining the metabolism of the brain, uh, especially during periods of starvation. So how do, I mean, uh, how does it work, the physiology, you know, the, with the placenta and the baby? How does the baby, how would the baby even know how much carbohydrate, doesn't the baby just sense glucose levels, ambient glucose levels in the mother anyway, and wouldn't you want those to be, you know, stable? Uh, well, first of all, uh, initially, until the baby has functioning endocrine organs, uh, it's not going to do anything about the glucose levels, except metabolize the glucose uh, as best it can. But glucose can cause glycation of proteins or injury to proteins that make up the baby uh, can cause damage to neurons damage to brain cells um, 
and uh, uh, so the development of the baby is injured by high blood sugar levels. Now, once the baby is has an has a pancreas and is making insulin, the baby will make too much insulin. Well, I'm sorry, sorry. The baby will make insulin to bring down its own blood sugar, and we frequently find uh, on delivery that infants of diabetic mothers are hypoglycemic because they've been bringing down the blood sugar, the high blood sugar of the mother <laughs> that's flowing through their bodies. And once they're out of the mother, her glucose levels are not affecting them, but they're still making the insulin. So uh, uh, it's now routine. Uh, for a while, it was routine to check the blood sugar of babies delivered of diabetic mothers looking for hypoglycemia. Now they're routinely checking all babies um, to watch out for this possibility. Uh, so uh, the baby, once he has a pancreas, is trying to correct his own blood sugars. But up until that time, they could be high and causing damage. Well, these women are really in a tough spot. What advice would you give them? Um, before they even get pregnant, they should find a high-risk obstetrician who believes in blood sugar control. Now, how easy is that to find? I do not know. Uh, I called um, uh, Lois Jovanovich for a referral for someone who lived in uh, a few hundred miles away from her. Uh, her institute and uh, she said well you could go to Stanford University and the people there are pretty smart they probably have uh, uh, someone who believes in normal blood sugars during pregnancy that, so she couldn't really help me uh, they probably have people in the town of her institute uh, well Actually, it's her institute that controls their blood sugars, so people come to them. Uh, but uh, finding someone else doing it is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, it is tough. Uh, I know that, uh, I believe at the University of Chicago, there used to be a doctor who believed strongly in normal blood sugars. Um, and I just don't know where to look. You have to inquire. Uh, there's uh, in an increasing interest in normal blood sugars in certain foreign countries, uh, Finland possibly, Sweden possibly, uh, but it's very hard to find. This is a problem.